In this video, we will learn three ways for solving a proportional missing value problem. So let's consider this problem. Rubio paid $5 for two pens. If his teacher wants to buy nine pens, how much does his teacher need to pay? So how do you think a fifth grader would approach this problem? A fifth grader who hasn't been taught how to solve a problem like this. So a fifth grader might build up, right? So two pens for five dollars, another two pens, another five dollars, until he reached nine pens. But if he has the fifth set, he would have ten pens, one too many. Then he will have to reason, you know, instead of having two, how much will one pen cost? And there will be 250, then all he needs is to add up all the pens, nine pens would cost $22.50. Now, let's extend this idea to the second problem. This time, his school wants to buy 428 pens. How much will those pens cost? Now, do you think the build-up strategy is appropriate for this problem? Why or why not? To build up two at a time is going to take too, much, too long to reach 428 pens. Now, how would you solve this problem? So in this video, I will show you three efficient ways. So this is called a missing value problem. Missing value in a sense, three values of the quantities are given and you are asked to find a fourth. So the first method is called the scaling method. You are scaling up. So how do I scale up from 2 pens to 428 pens? Here we are asking how many times do I need to multiply by 2 pens to get 428 pens? So the answer is 214 times and it seems it's like 214 batches of 2 pens. That means I need to pay 214 times of $5 to get my answer, All right? which is 70. Now this is called the within measure method. So we are reasoning from pens to pens. Now another way is to, to think about a unit rate. Two pens cost $5. I'm trying to relate the two pens with $5. One way to relate is to find a unit cost. How much will one pen cost? Which is 250. If you know a pen costs 250 and I need to buy 428 pens, all I need is just multiply 4 to 8 by 250. So this is the so-called a cross-measure type of solution. We are relating a cross-measure, pens and dollars. The third way is to set up a proportion. This is probably the uh, most common way taught in school. All right, so we were taught how to set up the proportion. Since we know $5 is related to two pens, I have five over two, then x is the number of dollars divided by four to eight number of pens. Now, if we use a proportion, we must ask what does each ratio in the proportion represent and why should the two ratios be equal to one another? So in this case, if we set up the proportion this way, this is related to the unit rate because the two 0.5 actually represents the $2.50 per pen, right? And the second ratio, it's also based on the same relationship of $2.50 per pen. That's why you can equate the two ratios. Alternatively, we can set up a slightly different proportion. This time, we take 4 to 8 divided by 2 pens over pens, equals dollars over dollar, right? So again, we have to ask what does each ratio represent and why should the two ratios be equal? For the second proportion, this is related to the scaling method. The 214 really means 428 has 214 groups of two. So likewise, X need to be 214 groups of 5, all right? So in this sense, the division is like how many groups type of division, okay? All right, so let's just consider one of the two proportion, and then the next part is how to solve for the unknown x. 
So normally we were taught the cross multiplication method, but actually there is a simpler way. If our x is on the numerator, since I want to get the x by itself, all I need is just what? Multiply both sides by four to eight, right? That will allow us to cancel the four to eight in the denominator of the first ratio. Then all we left is just x by itself, and the left hand side, if we do the calculation, is equals to one zero seven zero. Now a more general method that are taught to students is the cross multiplication or cross multiply. So students are taught that you can cross multiply by bringing the denominator of each fractions to the other side and become on the numerator. Right, so in this way, on the left side we have four to eight times five. The right side is x times two, and then after that we divide both sides by two. We will get x equals to four to eight times five over two, which is the same answer as one zero seven zero. Then, as teachers, we need to help our student to be able to explain why we can cross multiply. Now, one way of explaining. Is to think about getting rid of the denominator two and the denominator four to eight. How do we do that? We multiply both sides by four to eight and two. Now, if we do that, on the left hand side, the two cancel with this two. On the other side, the four to eight cancel with the four to eight. So now, what is left is just four to eight times five on the left side, and the right side is just x times two. Now. Another way to explain is to make the two fractions as common denominator. To get an equivalent fraction, I simply multiply it by one. But instead of writing a one, I'm writing four to eight over four to eight. And then on the other side, I'm multiplying it by two over two. Why I want to do that? Because I want to make both sides as the same denominator. If you do that, then what you have. Is the same denominator, and the numerator is actually what leads to the second equation. These are the two ways of explaining why we can cross multiply. All right, with that, thank you then.